So, it has been revealed to me that the fourth installment of Digimon Tri, Coexistence, will be hitting theaters May 10th. For those that may have not seen the series in a while, or at all, I figured I would try to summarize all the important points if you wanted to see this movie for yourself. One important thing to note here, I will be recapping two seasons, each over 50 episodes long, as well as three movies, so I'm going to be cutting out a lot. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with a few key terms I will be using throughout this video. Digital World, Digidestined, Digivice, and Digivolve. Each series kind of has their own different take on the existence of the digital world, which is pretty much where the Digimon live. For the first two seasons, the digital world is the physical embodiment of the internet, and the Digimon themselves are the physical embodiment of the data running through that internet. The Digidestins are the ones that are, for lack of a better term, destined to save the digital world. The next term I have is Digivolving. Pretty similar to evolving or evolutions in Pokemon. The main difference is the power ranking system, or at least that's what I'm going to call it. Let me explain using Squirtle as a reference. If Squirtle were a Digimon, boy wouldn't that be awesome, the Squirtle form would be known as a Rookie, which would then Digivolve into a Champion, and that is War Turtle, I believe he's called. From there, you would have Blastoise as the ultimate form, and then Tomega. It's the same name in Digimon as it is in Pokemon. I also want to point out that Digimon had Mega Forms all the way back in 1999, so Pokemon probably ripped that off. I'm starting to rant, aren't I? Uh, where was I? Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, the main differences in Digimon, the Champion, Ultimate, and Mega Forms do not stay. By default, a Digimon is either a Rookie or in training, which is the level before Rookie. The Digivice, which is found on all the Digidestin that I mentioned earlier, give the Digimon the ability to Digivolve. The model of the Digivice changes between seasons. For the first one, it looks like this. For the second season, it looks more like this. So if this were a book, that would be the foreword or the prologue. Now let's get into the actual story. The Earth is having a weird time. Floods were happening where droughts normally would be. Hot places saw snow, and so on. In Japan, there is a summer camp going on, but we focus on seven kids in particular. The first one being Tai, who is headstrong, often stubborn, but works well with the team. I think I'll let the character of Tai introduce the rest to you. This is Sora. She's okay for a girl. What? And Matt, Matt's too cool. Just look at that haircut. And this little kid is Izzy. He should have gone to computer camp. Huh? That's Mimi. I'll bet you can guess her favorite color on the first try. TK is Matt's dopey little brother. Oh, and this is Joe. But don't ever scare him. He'd probably wet his pants. So summer camp was rolling along just fine when the camp is hit by a blizzard. After it hits, all seven kids come outside to find the sky is pretty much on fire. From this, Seven Digivices fall to the ground. After each one grabs theirs, then they are instantly transported into the digital world. Here, each one meets their Digimon partner for the first time. These are the Digimon. Kuromon, and I've got this little pink thing following me everywhere. It is me, Mojimon, at your service. Anybody want lunch? Hi, Izzy. Meet Yokomon. My own personal something or other. Hello, I am Tokomon. Hey, TK, over here. Coming! Hey, Matt, you too? Yeah, I'm here too. No, I meant that under your arm. Oh, this guy? Yeah, well... Hello, you appear pleasant. Tsunoman is my name, and I am quite pleased to meet you. Thing? This thing? It won't leave me alone! Hey, who are you calling a thing? 
I'm no stuffed animal. The name is Bookamon. Mimi, are you all right? Think so. Don't worry. Tanamon's here to protect you. During their first major battle against a fierce beast known as Kawagamon, they are able to digivolve into their rookie forms. Kawagamon, digivolve too? Pokemon! Yukumon, digivolve too? Freyamon! Motimon, digivolve too? Tentomon! Tsunomon, digivolve too? Kabumon! From there, each digivolve one by one to their champion form until they are strong enough to take on the ultimate evil of File Island. File Island is where they first landed. Devimon. After the fall of Devimon, a strange being named Jedi appears to them. He tells of being able to digivolve to the ultimate form and of a greater evil where he is. To digivolve to the ultimate form, each must find a tag and crest. The tags were still on File Island, but it wasn't until they got to the continent of Server, the crests were found, along with Edamon. He might not look like much, but he was a force to be reckoned with. Tai was the first to find his crest, so he felt it was his responsibility to digivolve Agumon into the ultimate form. He got it to work, but he was corrupted into Skull Greymon. Luckily, his rampage didn't last for very long. Along the journey, everybody else finds their crests except for Sora. A mysterious email was sent to Izzy's laptop. Datamon claimed he had Sora's final crest. Here, Izzy finds the email address is from a website he visited sometimes, and later comes to the conclusion of how the digital world was made which I explained earlier to make it go a little faster. Through Izzy's knowledge, the Digidestined are able to find Datamon, all right. There's only one problem, though. He is working for Edamon. This makes the crest very difficult to get to. As Datamon was being freed from his cell, Edamon shows up. In the battle, Sora and Biumon were captured by Datamon, and the Digidestined had to leave her behind. A daring rescue was made, and an all-out war ensues. Sora was rescued, but not before Datamon accidentally made Edamon more powerful. Tai was able to harness the power of his crest to defeat Edamon once and for all. With Edamon gone, a wormhole opened up sucking Tai and Metal Greymon into the real world. Here we find that time in the digital world runs slower than in the real world. Tai was gone for about a month, give or take, but he was sent back only a minute after the day he went into the digital world. It is discovered that his sister Kari had seen Digimon before, specifically the one that Tai brought. Another wormhole opens up, allowing Tai and Agumon back into the real world again. Though Tai had been gone for about an hour in the real world, that was several months in the digital world. One by one, Tai is able to find all of the Digidestined. There, Jedi appears to them once again. A great evil named Myotismon is planning on going to the real world to find the eighth Digidestined and to kill them. Unfortunately, they are unable to get to the gate in time and have to consult Jedi on how to get back. Back in the real world, the Digidestined find pretty much no peace they have to find this Digidestined, as well as fend off Myotismon's goons, and keeping the Digimon a secret. It turns out that Gatomon, a servant of Myotismon, is the 8th Digidestined's Digimon. With this knowledge, Myotismon takes everyone hostage, where we find that Kari is actually the 8th Digidestined child. With her help, Gatomon digivolves to Angelomon, and puts Myotismon back into his place. Unfortunately, he comes back even stronger, named Venom Myotismon. With the help of a prophecy, provided by Jenna, of course, Agumon and Gabumon 
I were able to go to the Mega level and finally take out Myotismon. Oh, uh, Venom Myotismon. This victory is very short-lived, though, when the sky rips apart, revealing the digital world. The Digidestined must go back to take on the Dark Masters, this time fighting for Earth as well as the digital world. The hardest fight of their lives was the Dark Masters, but eventually, one by one, they slowly crumbled. After the last one was defeated, Piedmon, Jedi appeared again, stating that there was one more evil, the one that created the Dark Masters, Apoclamon. In this fight, he destroys their precious tags and crests. However, they realize that they don't need that anymore. The power was inside them all the time. Yeah, I know that's a little corny, but whatever. With the fate of two worlds in the balance, the Digidestined are able to defeat Apoclamon. Here, the Digidestined bask in their great glory. However, it is short-lived. All the Digidestined have to say goodbye to their Digimon before they would be separated forever. That was the summary of Season 1. Don't worry, Season 2's is a lot shorter. It has only been four years since the battle with Apoclamon, and a new team of Digidestins is formed. Davis, pretty much like Ty, but has an insane crush on Kari. Yoli, a real computer nerd, kind of like Izzy, but wants to fit in with the cool kids. Cody, though he is the youngest, he has the wisdom of one much older. Also, Kari and TK are back, but a little bit older and a little bit wiser. The threat they take on this time is the Digimon Emperor, a Digidestined possessed by the Dark Spore. In order to overcome Ken's evil ways, TK and Kari's Digivice have to morph, just like this new breed of Digidestines were. Through many battles, he is not only defeated, but exercised of his inner demon. After finally coming face to face with what he had done to poor defenseless Digimon, he finally is able to forgive himself and join the Digidestined. His name is Ken Ichijoji. There is much more to the story of Season 2, but that's pretty much all that's touched upon in Digimon Try so far. Speaking of which, it's time to summarize the movies thus far. These movies take place four years after the ending of Season 2, and for those of you keeping score, that'd be eight years since the ending of Season 1. The Digidestined occasionally get together, but not as much as they used to in the old days. Mimi lives in New York now, but comes back to Japan later in the movie. They kind of forced her back. It wasn't necessarily good writing, but whatever. At this time, the Digidestined of Season 2 are missing and presumed dead. Digimon are starting to come through a wormhole, but no ordinary Digimon. They are corrupted and much stronger than usual ones. Kawagamon shows up. Hey, just kind of like the beginning of Season 1, actually. Tai attempts to confront Kawagamon, but is almost killed when Agumon comes in in a very epic manner. With Kawagamon being stunned, Tai and Agumon get together for a little reunion, but it's very short-lived when Kawagamon gets back up again. Tai is able to get him to digivolve into Greymon, and that battle lasts for a very long time. With the assistance of Kari, Tai knows where the battle is raging, but unfortunately, his means of transportation has been, uh, decimated. Luckily, he was able to receive a ride from one of his mysterious professors, Mr. Nishijima. He works for a top-secret organization that monitors Digimon and digital field activity. Kind of similar to Hypnos from Season 3, but if you're watching this, you might not even have any idea what that means. Through this organization, all the other Digidestined are rounded up at this airport, and one great battle ensues with all the champion forms. The battle is won, 
but at the expense of a lot of property damage. Luckily, no one was injured. The next day at school, a new student arrives, Mako. It is later revealed that she is the ninth Digidestined with her Digimon, Mekumon. Kind of a similar name. I wonder if it's the same in the original. Things stayed calm for a little bit, until a very powerful Digimon known as Alphamon came in and started wreaking the most havoc yet. There was only one Digimon powerful enough to defeat him, and that is Omnimon, which is the combination of War Greymon and Metal Garurumon Digivolved together. Unfortunately, they were not able to defeat him, but rather he just kinda disappeared, and the movie ends with seeing the vast devastation he brought. In the second movie, Izzy becomes the head of IT for a major company his friend started up. He uses some of the resources to answer why these corruptions are happening, and why the sudden influx of Digimon. Leomon is one of the new Digimon that comes through this time. During an event at the school, there is a wormhole that opens up. Inside looks like Ken from the Digimon Emperor days. He has taken Mekumon captive. However, Leomon, Palmon, and Gomamon all go in for her rescue. Inside, they find that Ken is not alone. Instead, he has his Digimon, along with Davis's Imperial Dramon, which is the mega form of both combined. Very similar to Omnimon. In order to even up the playing field, Palmon and Gomamon are able to reach their mega forms for the very first time. With Imperial Dramon defeated, Ken accepts defeat and gives back Meikumon. With kind of a evil smile as well. Everything seems nice and peaceful, but all of a sudden, without warning, Meikumon just goes berserk and destroys Leomon. The movie ends with Meikumon going back into another wormhole, and suggestions that it's Meikumon that is the source of all these corruptions. The third movie begins with Mako going into an emotional breakdown, seeing that her Digimon murdered Leomon. In this entry, the corruption is spread onto all of the Digi- Starting with Patamon. TK keeps this a secret from everyone, and urges Palmon to do the same. Patamon, though, can't stand the guilt, and tells the other Digimon that he has been infected. He also pleads with them, that if he goes berserk, just like Meikuma did, that they will destroy him. It is found that there is a way to get rid of this corruption. A reset, or a hard reboot, of the digital world. There isn't much time, though. When Meikuma comes back again, it could be possible that the reboot could have catastrophic effects on not only the digital world, but the real one as well. In the process of this reset, the Digimon would lose all of their memories. Before the reset, the Digimon want to get every moment they can with their best friends before they forget them forever. Meikumon appears later in a distortion field, this time in a more Digivolve state. A great battle then ensues to keep her from coming into the real world. Slowly, all the Digimon start getting corrupted except for Tentamon, who is able to go to the Mega level. His job is to keep all the Digimon in the field, since the reset has been triggered. Within ten minutes, the entire digital world was reset, and all of the Digidestined go into a great mourning for their lost friends. Izzy is the first to snap out of his depression, and proposes on going to the digital world to find them once again. After enough time, they all agree and find their friends once more. The Digimon have no memory of the partners, so the Digidestin try to start a new friendship over again. The film ends revealing Ken as the Digimon Emperor. However, it's actually a disguise, and he's just Jedi. It's also hinted that Jedi worked for this organization that monitors the digital world as well. Well, that's hopefully everything you'll need to know. 
to see coexistence. I cannot stress that I cut out a lot of content. I didn't even mention the great story of Black War Greymon or the love triangle between Ty, Sora, and Matt, and also the rivalry between Matt and Ty for leadership, and the great battle that came from it. There were also several questions that were not only brought up within all this media, but also answered within all this media. If there's anything you think I've missed, feel free to leave a comment, and I will try to fill you in as much as I can. But for now, I think this is all you will need. So, I want to thank you substantially for watching this, and, well, maybe I'll see you at the theater.